Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dahmer, together with my co-host Mark Ronich just Statewide News Service, jbiztechvalley.com. And as you can see, he is the columnist for the Jewish Press. Yeah, I have a column in there called The Albany Beat, and it talks about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't as the case may be. And we have a perfect guest that dovetails all, right. all of this in... Uh, Bennett Liebman, he's uh, with the Government Law Center at Albany Law School. So welcome to The Jewish View. It's my pleasure. And Thank you for having me. Do we call you Ben or Bennett? Or? Doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to uh, ask you, what do you do with the Government Law Center? Because you came back. And uh, I'm, I'm retired. I'm a volunteer there. I, oh. just, I, I simply, they let me write on anything I want to. And for let any me topic blog, you mean? Most any topic, okay. which tends to be at times. Uh, uh, a lot of times, it's on gambling issues, and a lot of, and and a decent amount of the time, it's on New York State government uh, issues. And uh, I've been working in, in part as trying to work with with uh, the with with Beth Ameth as a way of just studying their history because uh, they they do go back. Uh, since 1838, and right? Try to, I'm, I've not been able to to uh, s you know to basically get everything together, but I would say that the first rabbi at um, at rabbi Beth Ammon, Wise, uh, Rabbi Wise, was a very good friend of of one of the founders of Albany Law School. So there is some sort of connection between Albany Law School and, I, and Beth Ed. Well, I gotta tell you, the county clerk's office, Albany County Clerk's Office has a lot of historical data mm -hmm. and you should check that out in their archives because I found a lot when I was researching Congregation Beth Abraham Jacobs history, because mm -hmm. uh, that's where Beth Emmeth evolved out of was Sort of the uh, uh, a, a 18, long time of predecessor. 1841. Right. There was a fight. Well, more. <laughs> there was a smaller fight. There was a bigger fight in 1850. Okay. But in 1841, uh, a good part of the Polish, more Orthodox portion of what was then Beth Emmeth, which was then Bethel, right. left to to find Bethel Bethel Jacob, uh -huh. uh, and. Which is you on know, Herkimer Street. Yeah. Now, part of the issue was that part of it was an observance issue, but a lot of the issue really was an ethnic issue, as almost all of the other uh, members at Bethel were German, and the people who left were were of Polish origin. So you know, that's been an, an <laughs> that's been an ongoing issue throughout sure. throughout. Uh, the Jewish community in Albany, where you had, <laughs> at the turn of the century, almost a time when uh, all the you know all the old German Jews belonged to Beth Emmeth, and the Russian Jews who were coming over in great numbers at the turn of the century belonged to the to all the other synagogues in uh, in Albany. But but really, for many many years, Beth Emmeth was the German Jewish synagogue. And there was only Orthodox except for Beth Emmeth when, when they broke away in 1850. But yes. that was the only... Yeah, uh, but Beth they were Emmeth really breaks all off Orthodox. into to Beth, to Old Bethel, which continues or, Orthodox, and to Ansha Emmeth, basically Isaac Mayer Wise's group, which, which becomes the, the uh, fourth oldest right. uh, Cons reform, reform synagogue, synagogue in the country. It's more than that. Because Wise really was Reformed Judaism. He was the founder. You can you can call him anything, but you know, mm -hmm. whether, you know people used to call him the Moses mm -hmm. of, of American Jew of uh, Reformed of, Judaism. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was that. So while the other three congregations really weren't pushing, they were just happy to be where they were. Wise was the person trying to make. Reform Judaism, the Judaism of the American uh, Jewish community, which was then really the German Jewish community. And, and he moved right after 1850, like two years later or whatever. 1854, he, he moved, moved to, to Cincinnati. Pitts. No, Pitt, there was Pitt stop in Pittsburgh no, first. No, you know, he's in Cincinnati. Okay. Pittsburgh is one of the uh, main locations for one of the, the Reform uh, synods over the years where they... Where they 
where they tried to iron out their differences among the reform rabbis. So you had synods in Pittsburgh, you had one in, in Cleveland, over, mm -hmm. and major, major differences between, uh, between the reform rabbis of that era. Uh, some were, uh, David Einhorn in, in Baltimore was far more, um, I don't want to say left wing, but he was far more, um, far more reform than Wise was. So there, and Wise was a very, very contentious person. Yeah. He would have been right at home in politics mm -hmm. <laughs> because he never, he believed in the Ronald Reagan uh, motto. If you're explaining, you're losing. So if people would attack Wise, Wise would never respond to their attacks. He'd just attack them. So you had a movement on the reform side in the years that, that Wise was an important figure, which is really 1850, up, up until really 1890, when he's still there, but he doesn't really work as hard, where, where Wise's role was basically fighting with everybody else in the reform community. But he did have one really pertinent uh, uh, act that he did in 1864, when he went right after the Gettysburg, right after Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address, he went to the White House and he saw President Lincoln with, I think, three other rabbis, maybe two other rabbis, and they were uh, and they talked to him about what Ulysses S. Grant was doing in the South yes. and kicking out the Jews yeah. from the South, and that's that meeting prompted President Lincoln to ask to order General grant to uh, reverse his order. Wise was, you know, to his credit, was a one-man B'nai B'rith by himself. He was, he was a one-person anti-defamation. Well, did I get the Well, did it's I get a little bit earlier right? uh, okay. because, you know, it, it's basically 1862, but immediately once, once this happened, you know, Wise sprung into action, which he often did, which was, you know, you cannot attack a, you know, it seems odd for us in, in the 21st century that here's this figure in the 19th century. You know, you did not attack a, uh, you did not attack Jewry without uh, without Rabbi Wise going after you. He just that was you know a lot of you know, issues can come up about his his devotion to liturgy and how 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 committed he was to any practice. But if you attacked a, a jury, he went after you. Did you he did not stop. Did you go to the F Jewish Museum in Philadelphia? I, I've been there about 25 years ago, but I haven't been there. This since. is a, a new museum that just opened up relatively yeah. within the last 10 years, probably. Yeah. And I would think that maybe you should go visit because they have a whole... Uh, and maybe you could correct some of their history, uh, what they're claiming, but they have a whole big thing about Mayor Wise and what his efforts were, and you know, I, I just think he was you, you would be fin you, you would either be able to add to what they have, or you could correct what they have. But there's a lot of things going on that. My favorite you know, thing about Wise in Albany is, again, dealing with the state, is that you know Wise was not being paid a very large sum, right, and. He started off, I think, at two hundred and fifty dollars a year uh, in 1846, and he he really he had a lot of kids. He had a need for 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 money, and when the synagogues break off in 1850, and he's left with less than half the members, he needs funds. Mm -hmm. But because he was a very good mixer. Uh, and he ends up being hired to work in the state library mm. in, as, because he's friends with, um, with, with, base, with Thurlow Weed, who is the main Republican leader in New York State and the, arguably the main you know, back, backdoor leader in the, in the country. And he's, but Wise has befriended him and we, he needs a, he's money. Mm -hmm. They get him a job in the state. Mm -hmm. So we have a a major major movement in in uh, in American Jewry 
which comes out of the state library, which is in the state capitol. So now, who was governor at the time? Um, I'll test your memory. I, I'm not sure whether it was... Remember, you have to remember 150 years ago. Well, it is, uh, I, I have no problems old, remembering what I had for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think George Washington Hunt might have, been the, might have been the governor at that time because being there and working in the state library, why, it's very easy. Wise becomes the uh, first rabbi... To uh, to open up a session of uh, of the New York Legislature oh, because right. he's he's right there mm -hmm. so he just you know he, if he's working there he can just walk in, he can just walk in and open the session but why why is this the first uh, clergy uh, first cl first Jewish clergy to open up a session of the mm -hmm. legislature uh, in New York and the second really nationwide mm -hmm. uh, but he, that's because he was working there he largely lived in the State Library which is part of. Uh, 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 Part of the state, the old state capital. It's very hard for us to look back and see a major religious movement coming out of the state capital. But that's the case with Wise and Reform Jewry. He spent most of his time hanging out in the, in the capital in the state library. When can can you give me your or you give us your uh, take on what that fight was about in 1850 on Rosh Hashanah? You can find all kinds. There are two sort of versions. Yeah. First of all, a lot. Wise was a tremendous politician, and not in not necessarily in a wonderful way of saying that. So it's Wise's like Donald, version. Donald Trump Wise's type of version. <laughs> Wise's version is is Wise would like it to be. I was too reformed for them. Mm -hmm. You know. As, they just couldn't. You know, my, my pace of reform was not something that anyone could could deal with. There were other inside the synagogue. There appeared to be that was definitely the case. But there were other issues in terms of why is not not dealing properly with with the management of, of the synagogue. He wouldn't provide them with with uh, his speeches in advance. He wouldn't tell them even afterwards. They'd, they'd ask him, "Okay, what did?" Could we get a copy of what you wrote? No. I mean, uh, he he called out uh, a member of the board of trustees for working on the Sabbath. We might think think of you know, as wise as being you know far far more liberal or less orthodox. But one of the things that Wise really believed in was the sanctity of the Sabbath. So he sent out a nasty letter saying. Uh, you got to stop that, or I'm going to I'm going to make sure you, you're thrown off the uh, the board. off the board. Uh, he he did some he com he complained uh, about uh, you know uh, the, whether or not the meat was properly koshered. Uh, there were other issues he had. So the, but really, you have to redefine. I mean, because there's different terms. Yeah. Of, you know, I mean, to, that would be different than yeah. a reform rabbi today. Yes, certainly. But but wise had wise had a different view of life, and and one the, the main thing for him was you 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 could not work on the Sabbath. And uh, kosher food was was the a way it was. So, right. come, you know, so so there were a lot. Wise is especially later because wise nobody wrote as much as wise did. I mean, he went to Cincinnati. He, he put out his own English speaking newspaper. His own. German-speaking newspaper. He was everywhere. Um, if mm -hmm. you want to look at Donald Trump type thing, yes, he was everywhere. Uh, but he he did everything with a little bit of nastiness for his enemies. So how did this fight okay. come about? The... The leadership of the synagogue basically forced him, tried to get him to account for what they saw was like they issued a set of charges. Uh, he uh, he basically refused to respond to his charges. They suspended his pay, which was one of the reasons why he needed outside work. For no and uh, a few days before Rosh Hashanah in 1850, they had a general <clears throat> meeting of of the membership, and while Wise claims otherwise, mm -hmm. it appears 
that uh, he was voted out. Services the next day, Wise's friends had sort of bought him a position where he could go, he could go up, you know, basically open the Torah, right? Open the Ark, and he gets up. He's not, he's not on the bima, but he gets up from his seat, which is in like the front row, and he walks up towards the Ark to open it because he he's, he believes he's entitled to it, and the president of the synagogue just beats the crap out of him. Literally? I mean, there was a physical if you, fight? Yes, yes, there was a major physical fight, and, right. and, and in fact, a riot broke out in the synagogue. And uh, rolled out into the street. Supposedly. And, well, the, yeah. the newspaper story yeah, had it, where the, the police came. Police came, they arrested in, everybody, and that was... And then, yeah. yeah, I saw the newspaper article about yeah. it. It says you can. Um, it's something like big fight in, in yeah. Jewish church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they rolled it out, and then they put an end to the services. Put an end to the services. <laughs> Wise hold. Wise's secessionists hold the second day of Rosh Hashanah in in uh, in Wise's home. Then they move to a razor strop factory for a year or so before he's able to raise enough money to to establish. A, a separate synagogue for Ansh Ameth. And where was that? It, it's at the c corner of Madison and Pearl. Oh, okay. So that's where that first synagogue... Their first, yeah, first, first synagogue before, was. Yeah. So, uh, it, so where they stayed until the late 1880s when Bethel and Ansh Ameth reconnected and, and had the synagogue built at Lancaster and... Uh, Where the Billborn Temple is. Yes, yeah, right. the beautiful. Well, they still have the Jewish stars on the back of their pews, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's other uh, ways of uh, still identifying that building as one, a one-time synagogue. You know? yeah, and B'nai Shalom bought the Ark yes. to, uh, to put it into its own synagogue, which, which was very ornate. You know, extremely ornate. Yeah. And, you know, that, that synagogue, especially for 1885 or 1889 when it first opened, cost a, a fortune. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really one, you know, one of the major, uh, major synagogue constructions of its time. And I think in large measure shows to really to reflect the, the prosperity at that time of, of the, uh, the, the German Jewish members of... Uh, of, uh, of Beth Emmeth, mm -hmm. because, you know, like it when or not. When was that of the, um, the Swan Street Temple? Yeah, Swan and Lancaster, yeah. yeah. From 1889 <coughs> to 1957. Yeah, that's such a beautiful structure. And Herbert Le really Governor is. Lehman, uh, Herbert Lehman would, would go to services at that because, you know, back when he, in the 30s when he was governor, he, they really had, you know, what, Albany wasn't built up the way it is now. So that was the closest synagogue to the capital. Plus so he, was, he, would, he was reform and that was, okay. that was the place for him to go. <laughs> uh, going over the records at, at, at Beth Emmett, there was at least one time when, when Franklin Roosevelt, when he was governor, gave, gave a speech at Beth Emmett as well. And so I, really, you walked over it. What? Yeah. You walked over. From, yeah, walked he was over wheeled or whatever. He, wheeled over. he made it. Sorry. He made it there. He made yeah. it there. And uh, I, uh, I, I was in the 1980s. Jesse Jackson came yeah. to speak at the Wilborn Temple, yeah. and I asked him uh, how really? it felt uh, speaking at a former synagogue. And he's talked about the Rainbow Coalition, yeah. and uh, you know, it's like we got into this whole thing. But I had a chance to ask him about this. But that really, I mean, it was right after his I, uh, I mean, derogatory comment about New York City Jews. But that's really, <coughs> I mean, that if you looked in, into, let's say, at New York City in, in the 1980s, and you saw 1980s, uh, if you yeah. looked, you know, there were so many, you know, former synagogues, let's say in Harlem or East New York oh, yeah. or Brownsville. That had, that had become churches at, at that time. Well, it's interesting because the Maimonides Hebrew Day School, the Jewish yeah. Orthodox Day School, it was Temple Israel, became a church, yeah. and now it's an Orthodox yeah. Day School over here. So things go, yeah, and now Harlem is becoming a, not a Jewish neighborhood, but it's uh, it, it, gentrified. It's, it's certainly gentrified. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you about your other, uh, another passion that you have is about uh, gambling, and not, yeah. not that you like gambling, <laughs> But I, I mean, it, I, I'm trying to find the right words to, out of respect. But you know, you like to 
Uh, I like to follow 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 the, okay. the, follow the the issues involving gambling. It's a it's a bad it's a bad thing that happened. I can I can blame it on on all kinds of things, but you know my 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 parents and my my grandmother uh, lived three blocks from Aqueduct Racetrack. The 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 high school that I went to. It, you know, you could see the, the Harness Track Roosevelt Raceway from from the from the high school, <coughs> but yeah, you know, what, what what just happened was I just got in with with uh, with different people when I was in college. But you were on the governor's gambling task force or something to that effect. Or you I, were I, was on, I was on the racing and wagering board uh, during both governors Mario Cuomo and uh, George Pataki. Okay. Uh, so. But then under this governor, Andrew Cuomo, I was you had secretary for gaming and racing. Right, and you were involved with advising him about the where the new casinos should be or something. Yeah, well, or? We, 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 I wasn't we sure. helped write we helped write the legislation for casinos. Mm -hmm. and so you say you're against gambling? Is I'm not a, against gambling. Mm -hmm. I'm I I I'm not exactly a passionate gambler. Uh, having two kids and trying. Pay for private colleges is, uh, has has <laughs> put a dent in pot anything I might wager, but uh, I I don't have any. I just don't. I've never really seen it a, as a as a vice. I've, I've just seen it as another, largely as another entertainment option, an entertainment option with which has some problems with it in the sense that you know, certain people can largely get addicted to it. And we need the state really does need to step up and provide services to those people who are who are affected by gambling. But you um, do, now that where they're talking about I don't know if this you had no idea of where these casinos would be located or anything like that. But you know you did you know one of the big things that I've been uh, on <clears throat> a few people's backs about is that you go to Saratoga Racecourse, which is a state-owned uh, raceway now. And uh, you don't have any kosher food there, but you got you know you got Ita an Italian day, and you have a Mexican day, and you have other types of ethnic days, but you don't have a, anything honoring Jewish. And I asked the uh, the head of the uh, Saratoga race course about it, and he says, "Oh, so you just like for us to have another type of ethnic day?" And I said, "Yes, I'm not saying you should get rid of them, but you should have another type." And then. They just never did it, and then you know. And here we have a nine-part festival, Saratoga Festival, going on, and they don't incorporate any of that into the racetrack. Yeah, you know, there's a Jewish uh, festival going on I, through the summer, and uh, it was one of my pet peeves. I, you know? I, I don't have that much understanding as to what actually goes on into the mentality of the New York Racing Association. And I was a board member there from 2008 to 2011, but uh, current, current management is not... Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think it should go back to being a privately run? It, it, there are so many issues here. I, I, I don't think anybody disagrees <laughs> that it should go back to private. The question is, how, you know, how do you construct the board and how... How much right, given the given the state's investment in the industry, do, do the does the public have in finding out how 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 the racing association runs? I mean, should should the open meetings law continue to apply? Should freedom of information law continue to apply? I think those are those really are. And how do you construct the board? Uh, those those are those are significant issues and. I'd like to, you know, personally, yeah. I, I, I see no reason why why Naira should not, even if it's private, at least have its me meetings open and have its records open. And it, it just uh, and yeah, I look back at time, and even when Naira was private, if the state or uh, people wanted to find out how much people were making at Naira, they found out. So that uh, mm -hmm. in 1964, I believe, you know, you know, the controller did a you know the controller audits Naira, so you find out what happened there. And yet, there's no recognition of their duties to the public. It really, they really need, even if they become private, there still should be certain re public responsibilities that they that they need to deal with. And what about um, the, uh, the you know the well, given your law background, you know your your 
background with Albany Law School and government law, what do, you, do you have an opinion about what you see going on in terms of the ethics uh, cha challenged uh, lawmakers, <laughs> ethically challenged lawmakers, or uh, uh, it, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Everything sickens me, but I just don't know what the answer is. I mean, I've been well, around. It could be that, uh, you know, some people throw out higher pay scales so they wouldn't have to yeah. feel a need to pull from uh, illegal Because you means. can't really legislate ethics. I mean, I mean yeah. it, it bothers me because we've seen major ethics reforms in 1950, the 1950s due at that time, of course, to, to uh, legislature uh, get involvement in horse racing and harness tracks as the many people in the legislature f f tried to figure out ways where they could own harness tracks, uh, which were then seen as a, the vehicle for printing money. Uh, in the 60s and 70s and like Watergate issues. We saw it in the 80s with you know, reforms a a after, after New York City issues. We saw it, you know, Governor Spitzer comes in in 2007, mm -hmm. Governor Cuomo <coughs> comes in in 2011. There's major ethics reform. And there just needs to be a, a it's easy to say, you know, well, there are certain problems with our laws. I mean, I mean convicted, Felons shouldn't get pensions. The the money from LLCs, those contributions make no sense. But I've yet to see a serious review of whether campaign financing or campaign finance law will actually work. And I've always supported it in an era where Citizens United largely allows people to make unlimited contributions to the candidates of their choice. So I, I, yeah, I'd like to see something more done. I, I, I'm somewhat dubious of how, how successful this is, given how often New York has enacted what was considered major ethics reforms. But, uh, but at the same time, I mean, something, you, you have a feeling that something should be done. Uh, some things will be helpful, but un unless we just almost get a total new attitude in view of this, uh, Whatever limited ethics reform we'll get will not really change the basic. Policy Have you been follow, Did you follow the Shelley Silver trial at all? Or? I, at times to try to to try to, to, to deal with it, but not as much as I probably wanted to. One of the advantages of being retired is saying I don't have to follow this. So, but you might, as a passion, as a you know, might be in your blood. You might want to just see what was going on, and yeah. the New York Times did a wonderful job, you know, covering I know, it. I never know. I mean, I, I, having been a hearing officer, unless you have this feeling that, that uh, unless you're there seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis, you never seem to know exactly what's going on. Well, let me ask you just on the thing. If, if he's uh, with a law firm that is giving him referral fees, which is legal, and then he gets grants and he hooks up with this other doctor yeah. and he's getting, you know, and he's, when it, wherever possible for this cancer research, he's getting this doctor grants and the doctor is referring patients to the law firm. I mean, is that a quid pro quo? You know what the word quid I, pro quo means better than anyone. I don't so, know, but all I know is the jury apparently, the, the jury believe that. You know, that's what I didn't, you know, think yeah. was. So, I mean, but, 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 but because I, that's obviously going to be the nature of the speaker's appeal, because, which is that you know, there, you know, there was no quid pro quo. The doctor said there was no pro, right. quid pro quo. And then on the other case with the commercial real estate, you know, most of those jurors were either you know black or Hispanic. There were like two or three whites on the on the jury. And here you talked about how he could, took money from the commercial real estate, but he he fostered all this legislation that was extremely pro tenant. And you know that these people who were sitting there probably were tenants. And this is a guy who was on their side as a pro tenant. Oh. You know, uh, I think the government so. did a convincing job that he was not really uh, on their side. You know that that even you know the votes were that he did enough to bas basically to make sure that uh, that uh, that the management at Glenwood got 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 what it maybe Want. they maybe they didn't get all they they wanted but they got what they needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, 
so I mean that's the, that's the way the jury saw it. We'll see what the what what the uh, second circuit says. Uh, is it and the, the second circuit? It will go to the second the federal okay. second circuit because that's the New okay. York and Vermont. And what does uh, what do you think about the Dean Scalos thing? Is that a, more of a cut and dry thing? I, I, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I yeah. yeah. Okay. I just don't know. I mean it's. Uh, I mean, again, these cases, it's nice to, to draw a little bits from what you see in the newspapers, but unless you're there yeah. you're following everything, you just never know right. what, what's happening. I mean, the only, I can only say the only federal trial that I ever went to religiously was more than 40 years ago was a uh, harness fixing case at, at, at a federal, federal court in Brooklyn. So that's the only case I could speak to about how, how, uh, yeah. what was happening in life. Okay. All right, listen, Ben, you're doing good work. You did good work for the people of New York State in the past, but we don't want you to let you retire. We don't want you to use your knowledge and your expertise to help more people, but keep on going and do it with good health. And much success, yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.